Hello and welcome to the Asteroid or Ghostroid breakdown and game plan. Today we'll be breaking down the general game plan we have for recreating the game Asteroid. Now, there is a lot of beneficial reasons of why you should go and recreate old small games like Pong, Asteroid, Snake and many others. You learn so much about how certain systems interact and you start to build up that coder's muscle memory on how to create these systems and actually change them for other projects. With that said, let's kind of first break down the game Asteroid into smaller chunks that we can easily understand. The overall kind of thing for Asteroid, of course, is your little flying ship. You've got to break up little asteroids. You get points per asteroid you break. Uh, little saucers will come in every now and then and try to shoot you down. You shoot them down, you get more points. And that's just kind of it. It's whoever gets the highest score wins. And by whoever, I mean, you've got to just keep beating your own high score or whoever else plays high score. So that, that's kind of what we're going for. Now, that, that's just the general overview, right? Now, we've got to, like, as I said, break it down into smaller chunks because trying to design things from a really large scope like that of just going, oh, this is this is the whole thing. How do I do this? It becomes a real pain. You want to piece it out bit by bit and then look at what systems are actually there so you know what to actually build. So let's take the asteroids, for example. They're, I mean, the game is called Asteroid, so the biggest part of the game is shooting down asteroids. What do asteroids do? Well, they spawn in around the screen and they kind of fly in the general direction of the player. They're really big at the start and the more damage you do to them, the more they break up into smaller and smaller pieces. Now, those smaller pieces, of course, fly a little bit faster and they offer a larger score. So that's kind of the uh, asteroids, right? Uh, split faster, more points. That's kind of how they go. Now, what about the UFOs? Well, they come in two types, large and slow. The large one, which is slow, has is relatively inaccurate, offers very few points, and is just kind of there to be a bit of a nuisance. Now, the other type, which is the small, fast, and more precise one, is a, has a bit, bit of a better aim, uh, moves around a lot faster, and offers more points for destroying it. Now, those are more of a pain, especially if you get two or three of them flying around at once. You've really got to end up kind of figuring out where you're going, planning your kind of pathing to make sure you don't get shot down. So you're starting to kind of see a general uh, theme appear here, right? The smaller something is, the more points it gives, which means the more accurate you have to be to actually do that. So the overall theme is accuracy equals more points. With the theme figured out, let's actually take a look at the player. The player has three lives, a projectile, and can only move in the facing direction. So whichever the direction the ship is facing in is the direction it can move. Now in Asteroid, you are using PC controls for this. You would use W to accelerate, A and D to kind of pivot your ship or rotate your ship around so you can actually turn and move like that. Now I'm thinking of doing something a bit more with the mouse, so you follow the mouse and where the mouse goes which allows you to kind of focus a lot of your movement and aim, so all of your accuracy just purely on the mouse. Now, fun fact about the movement is the movement is actually quite kind of interesting. It's acceleration and deceleration based. So basically, there is no you come to a complete stop immediately, right? You don't let go of the movement button and immediately stop like you would do in some other games. Instead, you can come to a slow stop, you decelerate slowly. Now, we could go a little bit more realistic with that and make it so the ship will always travel at the same speed, regardless of what it's doing, unless it holds down a button to like, kind of decelerate and come to a stop. That is a thing. I'm not going to do that. I want to have it relatively automatic when it comes to the deceleration. I want the computer to control deceleration speed, things like that. It adds or removes a little bit more of the uh, control cluster and allows you to kind of just focus purely on accuracy. So with the movement thought about, let's uh, think about the last primary thing. Now, I say primary because this is actually quite important. This is the player area or the level. Now, in Asteroid, you are on one screen. There is no extra levels. There is no uh, level select or anything like that. It's the higher the points you have, the more the level evolves, the more things spawn, the more deadly it gets, uh, the more fast-paced it becomes. 
Now, one thing that it handles very well is a thing called screen wrapping, which is where an asteroid will fly in from the right side of the screen, move all the way to the left side of the screen, and then the second it passes through the left side of the screen, it will wrap back around to the right side. Uh, the same with top bottom, you know, top bottom, left, right, diagonals. That's kind of how it wants to screen wrap, and we want to do that as well because that gives you this kind of infinitely large play area, kind of. And the ability to just kind of move around without having to go, oh, there's a wall there or anything like that. No, you can just keep going to the left, keep going to the right, and you're good. But with that kind of thought about and that handled, we now need to think about, uh, like, kind of bullet point these down and actually come up with, like, a chunking system. Now, I've actually already went and done this, right? I've done these bullet points, took a screenshot of it right here. This is the asteroid breakdown. This is the general idea of what we want to go for. Now, I'm going to... Uh, It'd be a good idea for you to pause this and jot this stuff down so you know exactly where we're going and exactly what we want to build and how we want to build certain systems. But this whole thing right here, this is the whole game. This is everything we need to create in just a few bullet points. Anything more than that, and it's not completely true to Asteroid, anything less than that, and it won't really be a full game. But with a good understanding of the game plan that we've created, in the next video we'll be actually starting to build out the game. Thank you for watching, I hope you're having a great day, a great game dev journey, and I'll see you in the next video.